Okay, step one says assume that which treatment each subject gets makes absolutely no difference in his or her response. So we are assuming that the experiment or the treatment doesn't matter. Okay, we are assuming that the treatment does not matter. Um, they say, in other words, assume the subjects in the experiment would give the same result no matter which treatment they receive. So the one that we just looked at was doing the mazes, <clears throat> um, and one group had to wear sin and mask, one group wore unsin and mask. We assumed it didn't matter which sin or which mask they wore, they would have completed the puzzle in the same amount of time. Now the good thing is. Step two means, or, or step two, we don't have to do that part, okay? You don't actually have to simulate the experiment. Now, we did, we did a sampling of that when we wrote down all the times, mixed them up, and then just randomly picked them. Um, you don't have to do that every time, okay? That's what the randomization uh, generator does on the computer, um, which we'll look at again today. You don't have to worry about actually doing step two, okay? Um, but before we had computers, this is what people really did. But step three is where you have to do something. Once you have your, uh, gener uh, your randomization distribution, okay, it will be given to you. You need to put the actual difference in the means. You've got to put that on the graph. Um, so you can't see it very clearly, but here's an example of a randomization distribution. And this red line right here is the actual difference in the means. Okay, you need to put that on the histogram where it actually falls. And then step four is the important part. This is how we determine whether the experiment actually did anything. If the treatments actually had an effect, it must be statistically significant. And to be deemed statistically significant, the results have to be in the outer 5%. Now, we talked about if that was 1,000 runs, and they'll tell you how many runs they do. If that's 1,000 runs, then the difference in the actual means needs to be in either the upper 25, per, or upper 25 results or the lower 25 results to be statistically significant. If we're talking about 500 runs, that one's also very common. 5% 5 of 500 <clears throat> is 25, so you're talking about the upper uh, 12 or so um, slash the lower 12, okay? It's got to be in one of the uh, extreme ends in order to be called statistically significant, meaning the treatments actually had a, an effect. So let's look at another example, okay? Let's look at uh, some chrysanthemums that uh, they used two different growth inhibitors. And what they're doing is the growth inhibitors, okay, an inhibitor actually means that it's, it's preventing growth. It's supposed to reduce the length of the stems because it says chrysanthemums with long stems are likely to have smaller flowers. If it has a shorter stem, it's going to have a larger flower. Well, who wants a long stem? Flowers are meant you know, for their, their actual flowers. So um, they are comparing these two growth inhibitors. They gave one of them to 10 randomly selected plants. B was given to the other 10. So we've got our random selection. 10 is probably an, an ample uh, sample size. Uh, and then uh, what's our third characteristic of a well-designed experiment? Control group, okay, or, or a comparison group. It's not really a control in this case because they're both receiving a treatment, so it's a comparison group in this case because there are two different um, inhibitors being given, okay? So here are the results. So uh, we just answered question A. It does have the three characteristics. We're good there. Okay, now here's the cool thing. They give us uh, some summary statistics here. And they give us a, uh, it's not a box plot, this is a, a dot plot. It's kind of designed to be like a histogram, you just don't actually have the bars, you have dots that represent the data points, okay? Um, so just looking at this data, um, and that, that's all we've got to go off of, and keeping in mind that we want the stem link to be shorter which treatment seems to be better, A or B? 
which seem to be more effective? A, right? Because we want the stems to be shorter, so our average stem length here is quite a bit less. It's not quite 10 centimeters, but it's about 9 centimeters or so. If we look at these dot plots, you can tell the majority of our data for inhibitor A is much lower than the data for inhibitor B. Um, and they purposefully use the same scale so that you can just visually look at this and, and compare uh, the data. So it seems like treatment A works better. Let's see if those results are actually statistically significant. So um, I've got the randomization distribution here. Okay, what does it say? It says use 500 random assignments. Okay, so I'm going to put 500 in here. And I'm going to do that. Okay, um, here's the data. Here is the actual difference in the population. Okay, um, if we subtracted those, okay, here's the actual difference. So we've got to figure out, is that statistically significant? Is it in the upper 12 or the lower 12? Is it even with the rest of the data? Anybody have an opinion whatsoever? No, it, it is, it's way out here. Okay, here's the bulk of the data. There, it's not even, there's not even a bar for the histogram down here. So it's below the rest of the data uh, for this randomization distribution. Okay, I can do 500 more if it makes me feel better. If I wasn't uh, quite confident in those results, so I just did another 500. Uh, it changed my graph slightly, but not a lot. But again, you can see that the difference in the populations when we did um, A minus B, that number is a little bit more than nine, negative nine. It's way down here. It's not even on the histogram. So it is definitely in the outer 5%. Um, so uh, the conclusion is that it is statistically significant. Um, inhibitor A did a better job. Was the better, um, was better. Because the difference in the means was in the outer 5%. distribution. Okay, so when I ask you a question like that on the quiz, that's how you should respond to that. Okay, you need to tell me, yes, it is statistically significant or no, it's not. And the reason why is because the difference in the means either was or was not in the outer 5% of that histogram that you will be given. Now, um, let's look at question E for just a second. I'm not super concerned about this, but I do, if anybody read it and was wondering what it's talking about. E says, if the type of growth inhibitor makes no difference, what is your estimate of the probability of getting a difference at least as extreme as the difference from the actual experiment? Well, to figure that out, you look at the randomization distribution, okay? And wherever your population difference falls, you look at that bar of the histogram. Well, in this case, it doesn't even have a bar. There's no data down here. So that would be zero out of the 1,000 runs that we ran. So in this case, it would be 0%. Now, if it had been, if it had been just a little bit over, if it had been somewhere between negative 6 and negative 9, um, I would estimate that to be... Uh, I don't know, I'd say it's about 20, okay, that, that bar right there represents about 
20 uh, results. So 20 out of 1,000. Figure out what that percentage is. Uh, 20 divided by 1,000. Nope, too many zeros. 2%, okay? If it had been in that other bar, it's not. Um, so in this case, your answer would be 0%. I can't remember. I'm getting ready to give you some practice problems. I can't remember if there were any questions phrased like that. Um, but to answer questions like E, you just look at where your mean falls. Um, let me also mention something else. Um, if it were right here, okay, if it were in the second bar, you've got to add up these two bars together. Okay? You've got to add up the ones that are uh, less than that if it's to the left of the middle. If it's to the right of the middle, if it were um, in this bar right here between 0 and 3, you would need to add up that one, and that one, and that one. Okay, add up all the ones to the right of it, divide that by 1,000. Does that kind of make sense? You'll see when, when I give you some practice on it. Okay? Okay, what does it mean to be statistically significant? That means that the treatment had an effect, okay? The treatment had an effect or if you're comparing two treatments, uh, one treatment was more effective than the other or uh, one treatment was better than the other. The treatment had an effect or uh, one treatment was better. If you are statistically significant, it means the treatment actually did what you were testing if it did. Okay. Um, what does a randomization test show? Well, that shows statistically significant or statistical significance. <laughs> That's how we can actually decide significance. And the key is the outer 5% of the uh, data on the histogram. Okay, that's the purpose of the randomization test, is to show whether it was statistically significant or not. You cannot just base that on, oh wow, there is a big difference in the means. Okay, the uh, flower one had a difference of about 9. Well, guess what? The problem that we did before that had a difference of about 9. Okay, but the mask one was not st statistically significant. The flower was statistically significant, even though the difference in the means was about the same number. Okay, so you've got to look at the randomization uh, test to determine whether it's actually significant enough. Okay, so I want you to uh, do those problems on that second sheet.